Is this is our 62 project that we are lowering the floor so a big person, tall person, can fit in one of these old Corvettes. And so the floor is dropped down two inches and back, the floor is, your seat's going to go back. Your footwell goes forward two inches. So two inches here, two inches there, an inch there, an inch here is everything that we're accomplishing. So with dropping the floor with our perimeter frame design that we've done to come up to what we're doing here, now we're coming into the rockers, take care of the rockers. Inside of a factory rocker panel is a not real heavy piece of steel. That when you look underneath your sill plates, you'll see rivets holding the steel in. And as you can see, the bottom of this steel is rotted away. Pretty common for an old Corvette that the frames get rotted, the inner structure gets rotted. So this is the inside of the rocker. And so on the outside of the rocker is a floor piece that is bonded to the rocker and into the floor. Naturally, we've cut the floor out and we've dropped the floor down. So now we have to come in here and bring this all up to date to do what we're doing with the floor. So we've already made this panel up. As you can see, it has a, an angle on it to fit the rocker, some notches, and inside the sill and the outer rocker, is a little pocket. So this gets tucked up inside that pocket. We'll epoxy it on both sides. And so in turn, we've made all these little flanges that's going to get bonded in here, which will bond the top of our rocker. Our flanges will come down and then we have another panel we'll show you that gets bonded here. And then after that, there's another panel that gets bonded here. So it's a monocoque design. It's like a, a, a modern car. It's uh, kind of like the um, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth generation of a Corvette. A monocoque design. They don't talk a lot about it, but if you ever get inside of one, you'll see how it is built. Everything is bonded together. Everything is interlocked together. The frame of of a newer style Corvette, the floor and everything is bonded to that frame. You can't pull the body off the frame of a newer style Corvette. This we're designed so we can still take the body on and off of the frame. But it's still going to have that same monocoque design that holds the car together. So it's building this is going to make it stronger. Now our frame rail is right here instead of in here. So the strength that we're adding to this car is tremendous. It's going to tighten this car up, not only make it a little tighter, a little more rigid, it's going to be comfortable for a big person. And you can see by the size of the tires on this car, it's going to have big tires. You'll see that as it comes with a convertible top that folds down still. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to bond this section of the rocker panel in. So it's a pretty easy way we found to deal with our epoxy. We mix up what we want. We don't get carried away with mixing up any more than we have to. Sometimes you do, but versus a cartridge, you get pretty good after a while. Now this panel is locking in and with epoxy we always like using epoxy for almost everything. This panel's getting locked in there. We're just going to run a little bead right along here because we have another panel that after this is all bonded is going to get bonded in here. Another nice thing about a baggy, it'll go places that those cartridges won't.
So we're going to shoot a little bit of extra epoxy right in this radius to finish it off. And naturally that helps give it some more strength. Well, Corvettes tend to be pretty loose sounding driving down the road. And I think when we're done with this, we're going to stiffen this old, old girl up pretty good. So you can hear the sound of that LS3 with 525 horse. inside this rocker to make it more like the other side. Right here is where I put the, our sides into play. And I know that should come right back to there. And so this is where our frame rails are going to fall right into place. involved in bonding in that section. We clamp it. We're going to show you how to last minute change to hold something, what we're doing. Hold. So this is our mold without a part in it. This is our C1 XL floor. We've designed this floor to drop approximately two inches from the original floor. Foot wells moved forward, and seat can come back a little bit more. It accommodates big tubs for big tires and still have a convertible top. So we're, part's been built, we're gonna pull it out of the mold. We're gonna give you a quick little explanation on the mold why our parts look like they do, and then this part is going to go into the booth or grinding booth and get sanded down so it can be prepped to be painted because this car is going to be painted if you want to uh, paint the bottom of it, lizard skin it, or if you want to leave it like it is, the way that you're going to see the bottom of this floor, it already stands tall. This whole venture started off with our 57 XL. So we've already built this item to go underneath that particular car. So we've taken that idea and brought it to an original body car. So we had to have a floor. We made our floor from scratch. The bottom side of the floor was finished off. So in turn, when we made our mold, this is the bottom side 
This is the top side of our mold, but it's the bottom side of your part. So the bottom side of our plug, which was our floor, we brought to a class A finish. And, and also in turn with this, we've built a perimeter flange around this to infuse it. So if we choose to infuse this part, we can infuse this part. So we're ready to infuse it. If we go that route, this one that we built that we're gonna show you is a hand laid part. Just wanted to kind of show you, the parts are shiny because the mold's shiny. The only way you get the mold shiny is a lot of hard dedication and a lot of hard work. If you don't have that dedication and that passion, it doesn't turn out like this. That's when corners are cut. So come over here, Andrew, with me. This is our floor upside down. So you see what was in that mold is on our floor now. This is the bottom of our floor that you're going to see on the bottom of that car when you're done. <clears throat> The crew that we put together here, the people we have here are very passionate. Ed's been with us over 35 years. A lot of experience been here pretty much his whole career. Todd, Todd comes from a very extensive background in automotive. Tyler and Corey came to us from the Saginaw Career Complex, I believe seven years ago is when they graduated. And then the guys in the fiberglass shop from Cameron and Cliff that built this part. It's a gorgeous part, I can't say enough. But it's because it came out of a gorgeous mold. So we're gonna take and DA the back side of this, which is the bottom side that you're gonna see in the car. We're gonna DA it to 150 grit because our plans is to refinish the bottom of this car. So you gotta sand it down so whatever product you're gonna put on it adheres to it. So you'll be able to prime it paint it, if you want to lizard skin it, or if you want to leave it just like it is, that's fine as well, leaving it just like it is. So we're going to show it to you after it's sanded and the process of bonding this floor into the body. We've sanded the bottom side of our floor, which is the part that you're going to see. Between a combination of DAs and hand sanding with blocks, 150 grit is what we sanded this with. So if we choose now to go with primer to end up with a high-end paint job on the bottom of this car, we're going to flip this over and we're going to show you on the back side where we're going to grind it, where everything's made to bond to the bottom of this car. So once we're finished with the bottom of the floor, then we came to the top of it, we took our Sharpie and marked approximately three inches around the perimeter from the number one body mount all the way down the rocker, up over the wheel well and across the back. We marked with our Sharpie, we took our three inch grinder, three inch, five inch, whatever you choose to use, 24, 36 grit, whatever you choose to use. We came around the perimeter and we ground this. This is where we're going to get our epoxy bond. And while we're on the back side, we did our rough cut-in of our pockets. These are the pockets for your trunk and deck lid hinge assembly. There's going to be a pocket that sits in there, that sits really recessed in there. And so you'll see more about this as we go. Perimeter of it, all bonded. So we're prepped out. We're going to cut these out. We have our four alignment holes. We're going to marriage the floor to our rockers. Keep in mind, you saw the part earlier as far as putting in these rockers. A uh, total of, I think, 10, 12 pieces to replace the factory inside rockers. So it's all fiberglass, it's all beefed up, it, it's rock solid. So this is going to get bonded. The top of the floor is going to get bonded to the bottom of the rocker. And keep in mind, we're also going to be putting our tubs in here before we bond this. So you're going to see the tubs sitting in here. We're not bonding them until this is all finished. And once this is cured, then we'll move our tubs into position and bond them. Likewise with the front bonding strips on the firewall kick panels and our inner fenders. Right now I'm going to finish this rough end cut and get these pockets out of here. Then we're moving to the next step.
you'll notice on this part there are some scribe marks that we've made. Scribe mark for this pocket, we scribe, scribe marked up on the firewall kick panel to the design that we wanted to fit the factory firewall. We also scribed our four locating holes that we're going to put into the rocker. So these are cut out now. Now we're going to go get our rear tubs and prep out our rear tubs, get them ready to set into place. Right now we're dry fitting the rest of our um, XL62 floor or our XLC1 floor. We've changed the inner fenders from the 57 to accommodate for now a little bit later into the C1 generation. We've designed a new firewall so you see the firewall, the inner fender left and right is sitting in there. Everything has flanges to it so it's sitting in there. And here's another flange bonding strip that goes on the back side of the inner fender for your final bond where you're going to your final position. So if you come underneath here Andrew you're going to see how everything interlocks. So here's our new inner fender with no flange but then we add our bonding strip flange to the top of it. So now this gets bonded to the hood surround and then you come back and bond the inner fender to this. So if you need to move the hood surround you can see that movement once you got everything fitted, you're going to mock up your hood, you're going to dry fit everything, and then you're going to go to bond all this in. Before we bond this, so we're going to bond in our inner fender, I mean our firewall, and our firewall bonding strips. So everything pretty much just snaps out of here. Everything is coming out. Everything has flanges to it. Flanges all the way. Here's the firewall sitting right inside the engine compartment. Everything has flanges around it. So it's flanged all the way around. And same token here. This is a flange that incorporates the rockers to the original firewall, to our firewall, up and over, locking everything in. Everything's locked in. So we're going to come in here, we're going to finish our fit of our floor. We're going to bond our floor to rockers. Then we're going to come back and bond this bonding strip, which bonds at the rocker to the floor, which now is locking everything in. And then the firewall goes on, then the inner fenders. So we'll try to take you through this so you can understand it and see what we've done here to make all this work. Just a little explanation here. If you go back to the rocker segment of this video, look inside this pocket right here. You got to sneak way around inside of there, Andrew. We've added three of these on each side. So we have three gussets that we put in there. Normally there's a piece of tin that hooks to the rocker at the bottom and the top here at the door jam. So we've taken that piece of metal out of here, and so now we have three gussets that bond to the outer and to the inner. We have a new gusset, a new panel that comes in on the top, cuts into the existing door jam at the bottom and comes out. Then we have a new piece of the rocker that we built here that's glass. It's a Z shape, I call it, that hooks in there. This bonds to the gussets. The gussets are bonded on each side. Rock solid. So now this is our panel we've designed to bring together our rocker, our factory floor, firewall, and now our floor firewall that's going to bring this all together. Everything locks together. It's going to fit like a glove. So this panel comes around here. It's going to get bonded here, here, across here, up on both sides. So once we've prepped this out, we'll put our epoxy in there. This panel will go up into here and get bonded. So it's bonded to the original floor, firewall, rocker, our floor that we designed, firewall, it all comes together. Then after this is bonded, then our firewall comes in here and gets bonded into place. Our dry fit is finished. We dry fitted our inner fenders, firewall, bonding strips. We have our four locating bolts 
These are to locate, bond the floor. When we're done, we'll take them out and fill the holes. Very seldom do we ever drill a hole in a piece of fiberglass around here, but you'll never see this one because the frame's gonna conceal it from here and the panels inside will conceal it. We dry fitted our floor. We have four locating pins where our floor is gonna go and marriage to our frame. It's marriage into our rockers. Now keep in mind, we've beefed up these rockers. There's five new panels per side that we've put in here to design this rocker. Rock solid. You hear how it used to sound? That's how it sounds, because it's rock solid. We're coming underneath here, the big Sharpie, and we're just outlining the outer perimeter of our floor to the rocker. Because when we let this down, we're gonna shoot our epoxy in there, and we don't wanna be messy. If we can contain the mess while we're doing what we're doing, that's less on the other end to clean up. So we come inside the cockpit once again with our Sharpie. We're gonna run our Sharpie so we know to keep our epoxy inside the Sharpie lines. Around this back quarter panel here, we're gonna get the top of the quarter inside that quarter jam. Okay, right now something you yeah, really remember to do is we have our tubs just sitting in here. We're not bonding the tubs right now. We're bonding the main floor at the rockers. We'll come back after those are set. These tubs will get moved out, they'll get bonded, and then the extensions will get put in there. But these tubs have to go on top of the floor before you can put the body on top of the floor. If you forget to put the tubs on top of the floor and you bond that floor in there, I guess you gotta figure that one out. Just remember, tubs on top of the floor, body gets glued. So, I think we're ready. So we wanna take this back up enough to undo the bolts and let it drop down to our fixtures. Okay, back to our explanation of our fixture. We built this fixture, goes around the outside perimeter of the car. We use the hula hoop system that you've seen that we have, the two hoops that we can turn this thing around in, which will end up back on that down the road. Pretty much whatever you choose for a, a body fixture, a rotisserie, should be able to work in what you've done here. But we've mounted to our doors, so our door gap is the same. Um, so we're not losing our door gap once we open this up. The back of the car is suspended to our fixture and the front of the car is suspended to the fixture. So this is holding this body. This body's been twisted around upside down and everything you can think of and it hasn't moved. So we've also built two more fixtures that go underneath this that's gonna hold our floor. We're gonna drop the floor down. We're gonna bag our epoxy, mix up our epoxy and put it in our bag and squirt it in there. Then we're going to put the floor back up to the bolts, bolt them snug, and then put our wedges in there with our other fixtures to hold it and walk away from it for the day. So go ahead and drop the floor, Todd, and Andrew can show that being done. <coughs> okay. Okay, right now is what he's doing is blowing out the dust from our rocker panels. It's got to be dust free. So now we're going to bring our epoxy stuff over here and show you how we do epoxy one more time. Okay, the epoxy we use, we choose to use one that we control how much we're mixing instead of out of the tubes. For the money, this goes a lot further. It's uh, two parts of the epoxy itself to one part of the hardener. We're zeroed out. I'm going to do 200 grams of epoxy to 100 grams of hardener. So you just want to make sure everything's mixed up good, thoroughly. Uh, the pot life on this, today it's about 65 out. Probably have a good 15 minutes before it starts to kick in the bag. Once you spread it out on the floor, pot life is going to be longer because it's not in the mass that it's going to be in. So we put our epoxy in a heavy duty freezer baggie. Put a little vent hole at the opposite end of where we're gonna come out. Put a little cut in there, about three eighths of an inch. Thank you. You're so welcome. And 
we're going to kind of climb in inside of here a little bit. Right now our floor is sitting on our fixture going across from side to side. It's holding our floor right where we want it. We're coming in, we're staying within that Sharpie line and we're coming right down putting a nice fair bead of epoxy. You see how we're coming back in here on the rear section of this and so we're coming across here on the floor we're putting our epoxy there then we're coming up here to the front take that up a little bit higher would you Don? so now my bag is going in there and just kind of getting in there nice basically just getting it down there now something you want to keep in mind here is we're doing this with epoxy we're not doing it with a polyester product and we have a nice pot life on this so we're not being rushed we, we have our two by fours against the floor surface and our fixture going across the bottom of those we've added our wedges and we've kind of tapped our wedges into place to put an upward pressure on that floor so we get a nice good bond and you saw the way the bond oozed out on both sides pretty comfortable it's nice and equal okay. can you put your stick in there at an angle and we're just wanting to butter that epoxy around that corner a little bit. Yeah, just enough squirting out of this side. And when we get done, we're going to let it down, go up inside the car, and make sure it's not excessive mess. You want to come back and see this quarter inside the rocker back here? So you want to come back in here and finish this off nice and neat. This part here for the convertible top will get bonded later. We're not bonding that section yet. A lot of design work has gone into making this whole thing fit. Perimeter frame, floors drop two and a half inches, foot wells moved forward. You're going to end up with 11 inch tubs in the back. Be able to have a big tire convertible top. If you look inside here, Andrew, yep. you'll see where it oozed out more so here than it did on the bottom, thankfully. So we're just going to come in here and be as neat as can be. Monocoque design is where the body and the floors all fasten together, preferably with epoxy glued together. We have a lot of panels in this design that overlaps to give us that monocoque design, the strength. Makes everything kind of fit like a glove. So, one thing to keep in mind, don't forget to have your tubs, your main tubs sitting on the back of the floor when you're gluing the main floor in because these are going to slide over. They're going to slide over, you're going to bond them. The extensions are going to slide. We've made these tubs so they can go here. And if you want them there, you could put a 24 inch tire in the back of the car. See 24 inches? But then you'd lose your convertible top. We designed them so they get moved over and you have about 11 inch tub. So you still have a nice size tire back here and you still facilitate a convertible top. God knows you don't want to get caught out in the rain in a convertible without the top. So, for now, thanks for watching.